always love going out to Fredericksburg. Thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. Right now we're going to be talking about restoring our soils with George Altgeld from Geo Growers. George, welcome back to Central Texas Garden. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you on the program. And a lot of people are wondering, after last year's heat and drought, what happened to our soils? Uh, there's a lot of concern out there that the soils just kind of went infertile or actually in some cases may have died in a sense because of the lack of moisture. I saw a lot of soil for all apparent, you know, for all practical reasons it has died. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so little organic matter in some of these soils that the heat just got to the microbes and, and it just toasted their environment. Mm -hmm. Well, it toasted us for sure. It doesn't surprise me that it toasted the soil. And I, I would be particularly worried about uh, soils that hadn't been well tended, you know, th th where no organic matter had been turned in previously or there was no mulch cover. And there's, that's a, that covers a lot of ground out there in Central Texas. It does. Uh, the biggest friend of soil is carbon. Mm -hmm. And carbon is what protects and houses and keeps moisture available for the microbial life in the mm -hmm. soil. And that, of course, is what's going on with soil. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably the best reason why you should put on compost this year. Compost is going to add carbon, especially if it's the wooded and it has some kind of wood component to it, right? Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, I don't consider that to be compost. That's, that's but, mulch. But, but yes, that's mulch. But there is a woody component to it. And it's mm -hmm. called lignin. Mm -hmm. It's an almost microscopic particle. It's what's left over that the cow doesn't digest. Okay. And we're using manures from bovine, uh, da mm -hmm. dairy manure composts. And that lignin is um, a non-reducible, non-edible non portion of what's in cow manure that lasts for thousands of years. When you put that back, it stays. Okay. It's a great way to build soil back. Okay, so look for those kinds of, of compost that are going to be rich in them. Which ones would be uh, dairy compost, obviously, that you're referring to? Right. Uh, and, and it's the one that we use exclusively. It's uh, rather hazardous to use um, feedlot manures because of the herbicide residues that may be in what they're feeding the cows in feedlots. Mm -hmm. uh, in dairy cows, they're feeding mostly alfalfa. And they, some uh, dairies actually have pasture for the cows. So you're getting live green grass that's mm -hmm. also filled with lignin, and it's a great soil builder. Okay. So for the average homeowner out there looking at devastated lawns, uh, tired if not exhausted or dead gardens, uh, what, what are some of the practical steps that they can take right now? I mean, obviously, uh, top dressing with compost is a good thing to do. Would you, would you recommend actually uh, maybe completely uh, turning uh, beds in and starting fresh? Uh, no, I don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. uh, the expense is one reason, but really what you want to do is you want to add organic matter back and you want to feed those microbes. I highly recommend molasses. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to get your microbial life going again. And it, the first of the primary consumers, they're all going to eat that, but everything they metabolize is food for some other strain of microbe in the soil. So you're going to build the soil back in tiers. Okay. Its complexity will bounce back very quickly. Well, let's talk about these tiers, you know, practical applications. A compost is the first tier? It is, and, mm -hmm. and I also recommend uh, aeration, mm -hmm. which will get that down below the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets food below the surface, but also it gets air below the surface. So and loosening the soil in some way. And yes. whether it's with a tiller or uh, an aeration device of, of yes. some sort? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And do be cautious under oak trees. You don't want to chop up the roots with a tiller. Right. We're, we're trying to protect them from oak wilt. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, everything you do along those lines is a good idea. Uh, in your garden, I don't recommend tilling per se. Uh, you can if it's really necessary, but the best thing is to add it to the top and work it in with a fork. Mm -hmm. Because the soil has arranged itself in horizons in your garden, and you want to keep those horizons intact. When you say horizons, what are you referring to? Uh, the top one inch layer is mostly the things that provide um, food and sustenance for feeder roots. Mm -hmm. The further you go down, the more it changes into things that are holding moisture and providing a backup of minerals. Okay. The deeper you go down, the more it changes, and you leave that intact. Mm -hmm. 
So you were really, uh, in, for the most part, t looking at that top layer that hor of the, those horizons. Yes. So uh, bringing in the compost uh, that will provide the microorganisms, et cetera, there. Yes. Uh, maybe adding some molasses. Are there any other kind of things that help make the soil more fertile that you would recommend? Yes. I have to admit I had forgotten about Medina soil activator, mm -hmm. but my friend Malcolm Beck suggested that I use it. What a difference that made. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. In my garden, I had uh, pepper plants just started flowering again as soon mm -hmm. as I put this on. And this was in the last two weeks of August. Mm -hmm. They had plenty of heat then, and I got an amazing response. Okay, so m soil activators and molasses, the compost. Um, for In garden areas, that say ornamental beds and things like that, would you then put mulch on top of that? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to protect from heat. Uh, you want to protect from, you know, too cold, loss of moisture. Right. And these days we have uh, mulch at the store called magic mulch. And it's a feeding mulch. You don't want to put it below the surface of soil. But in the meantime, it behaves like a mulch, conserves moisture, uh, it gives you protection from extremes in temperature. But every time you water it, the nutrients from that compost that are in it mm -hmm. leach downward and feed the microbial life that's in the soil. So a mulch compost blend, in other words. Yes. Right, right. And uh, th these have actually become very popular in recent years. As, yes, as they have. And uh, for good cause. <laughs> for good cause. Right. They, they do need to be replenished a little more often, though, don't they? They do. They'll last about a year, and then they're gone, whereas you can get about two years out of most mulches. Right, right. So for those, uh, we've talked about garden situations, like in an ornamental bed, um, um, also perhaps in uh, food production beds. Let's talk about turf areas, because this is, this, uh, in, in fact, it's become a kind of an ongoing rant and rave on the radio when I uh, host my call-in program talking about lawns and turfs. Um, what, do you, what do you tell homeowners who are looking at uh, turf that has either died or is exhausted or on the edge? The first thing I tell them, it's time to rethink what you have for a landscape. These monoculture, grass, turf areas, um, they consume inordinate amounts of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides, which, by the way, uh, goes into the aquifer that's being leached downward. And then, you know, that's pumped back up to the surface. We're using that for water to drink, to cook our food with, make baby formula, and the, you know, the cancer rate keeps climbing. We've got to make that connection, that it's time to cut back or stop using those things. Now, from that point of, well, let's do reconsider what we're going to use, uh, there are ornamental grasses that use tremendous amounts less. Now, if you've got little kids, you may want a lawn or you may mm -hmm. want some area for them to play with. And, you know, um, a bricked-in patio area with some uh, ornamental grasses can be too hard of a surface. So sure. there are other considerations. But uh, there are many, many things that we can do that don't require water, mm -hmm. even in a drought. And okay. So... Obviously, this is something we've all been talking about is, you know, think of other options instead of turf. But for those people who are insistent, sure, that, you know, who uh, will not relinquish that idea of the perfect lawn and yet are suffering this year, or their lawns are suffering, what, what do you tell those folks? Well, you want, to, you want to start feeding right now with molasses and you want to start putting the microbes back. You can do that with compost. You can do it with compost tea. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have... Um, another product called Thrive that is an array of beneficial funguses, fungi, and you want to spray those on, get some mm -hmm. in there, they start working, they start doing what they're supposed to do. When you apply a fungicide, you kill every fungus in the ground. That's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Those funguses are hard working, they're doing a lot for you. If you have a fungus problem, use garlic mm -hmm. because it has a tendency to only affect pathogenic funguses. It's like, you know, garlic is used to keep the vampires away. <laughs> okay. Works pretty good, okay. especially in, in uh, soils. Okay, garlic sprays are pretty readily available nowadays as well. Yes, they are. Or you can brew up your own at home. Now, uh, for uh, if people are thinking about regenerating turf areas and lawns and they want to kind of get on a schedule, what is an appropriate schedule? What kind of compost should they look for for that top dressing we're always recommending? The best is still going to be bovine manure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got all the lignin in it. It's got lots and lots of trace minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, trace minerals are so overlooked. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. The thing that you want to stay away from is um, NPK fertilizers. The P and the K are very stable minerals. Those are phosphorus and potassium. Nitrogen's evaporating out of that. So you wind up with way too much phosphorus and in time way too much potassium. The phosphorus load alone will bring about a decline in your lawn just because there's too much of it yeah. and it ties up your micronutrients. Okay, so no fertilizer, uh, uh, the, uh, the typical MPK, top dressing with a compost. April and September is what I usually say. Is, do you think that's appropriate? That's appropriate. Okay. Now, the molasses you can put on right now, and mm -hmm. I would because the microbes, they're hungry. They're okay. looking for anything. You start building their populations back, now you're starting to hit a chord. Okay. The thing's going to hum by the time you get into spring. Okay. Well, lots of things for our audience to chew on and for the microbes to chew on as yes. well, <laughs> assuming they're George. Thanks, as always, for coming on the program. My pleasure. Such a, a wealth of information about what's really happening below the surface. So we really appreciate you being with us.